And Neptune is involved with these objects. Neptune is fooling around these dwarf planets. Join me for these ice giant escapades. I don't know if you know this. Thor news is for winners. And that's why you're here. So stick around. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. Hey, I found an article. Let us read it. Newly discovered solar system objects resonate with Neptune. Well, wonderful. I don't even know what that means. I guess it means they can relate to Neptune. This wonderful animation is showing us exactly what they're talking about. This is physics.org, July 21st, 2016. Alright, which one's Neptune? Man, technology. Doesn't this wonderful 4K capability just blow you away? You know, it's in the east. Well, to be honest, we go over here. You can see the moon right there. You see that? Above animation shows how the scientists discovered 2015 Funky Job 345 from the images with the Hyper Supreme cam at the Subaru telescope. The observations took place March 17, 2015, and the interval between the individual images is about two hours. Credit Scott Shepard, David Tholen, and Chad Trujillo. All right. I'd like some other definitions of what's going on with the stuff. Hopefully this wonderful article will continue to be wonderful and tell us. Did I mention I'm in a weird mood? So, sweet. Search for distant solar system objects has found two more small worlds far outside the orbit of Neptune. Far? Interesting. The new objects are located beyond the Kuiper Belt, which is a belt of small icy objects just beyond Neptune, of which Pluto is a member of this trans-Neptunian dwarfian family. Sweet. They have the third and fourth most distant perihelia, which is when an object has its closest approach to the sun of any known solar system objects. Whoa, let me read that again. They have the third and fourth most distant perihelia, which means they don't come very close to the sun, but they're still locked into us, and we can see them, and they're close. Aster. In addition, and this addition is the spicy part. Please allow me to be the spice of your life. In addition, the orbital motions of these objects are in resonance with Neptune's orbit, which was somewhat unexpected. I'll say, I wasn't expecting that at all. Their orbital paths imply that these worlds either have interacted with Neptune in the past. Can you explain interacted? Because I know that um, in the past, there have been confusing definitions of interaction with human beings. Am I making any sense? No. See, there we go. Their orbital paths imply that these worlds either have interacted with Neptune in the past or are continuing to do so. Why does it sound like Neptune's cheating on me? I'm never even dating Neptune. He's not my type, really. He's a planet. And he's a dude. This latest discovery is based on observations made with the Subaru telescope in Hawaii and Caro Tolololo Inter-American Observatory Telescope in Chile. And is described in a paper published in the July 2016 edition of Astrophysical Journal Letters. Dr. Scott S. Shepard, backed by his awesome wife. That dude is from the Carnegie Institution for Science. And his collaboration with Dr. Chadwick Trujillo from the Gemini Observatory. I think you forgot a bracket. Wait, at the time of the research, where is he now? I can't go on until I know. Okay, I'm just kidding. And Dr. David J. Tholen from the University of Hawaii have been conducting the widest, deepest survey ever to search out distant solar system objects. What was I talking about? Oh, the team members started their survey using the Supram Cam Imager, which they got from Optimus Prime when uh, they battled him back in the day. And then they used it for this magically telescope that still takes like 1970 photos. Man, imagine getting that shit in color. What would it be like? Watching the universe in live motion, in real time, in color. 4K color, bitches. And remember, when I call you bitches, I do it with love. It's like when Ender would call his army, Ho, oh, yo. Or did I get that wrong? Their main goal is to find extreme trans-Neptunian objects, and they already have successfully found several. Now with the new Hyper... Now it's Hyper? Holy crap, this thing moves fast. The Hyper... The Hyper Supreme! Cam, on Subaru, they're able to cover a lot more of the sky than in the past in their searches for faint, distant worlds. Because they had to put faint in there, because if it was really bright, then these guys should have found it a long time ago. Despite their great distances from the ice giant planet. Oh, ice giants. Here we go. Now this Thor story just got interesting, eh? I guess you just have to stay tuned for the interesting part then.
So uh, stay tuned. Man, these stories have been coming out like raindrops from the sky during a storm. Just whoosh. Okay.